Hi guys, Dr. Tom here. Hey, and I just want to highlight a few things that might be helpful for the Earthquake Engineering STEM Challenge. So we know that earthquakes can be pretty devastating and cause millions of dollars worth of damage and tragic loss of life too. And this STEM Challenge re really considers how can earthquake resistant buildings be designed and developed so as to minimize the damage and destruction that comes from these killer quakes. And here's a picture of the El Chiapas quake that rocked Mexico in 2017 with an 8.2 quake on the Richter scale. And here's some damage from the Great Sichuan quake that demolished parts of China and Tibet on May 12th of 2008. Over 69,000 people were killed in this quake that measured a massive 8.0 on the Richter scale. So earthquake engineering, guys, is really the design and development of earthquake resistant structures. And while the ground can shake in many different ways during an earthquake, it's the side to side motion of an earthquake that can cause the top and the bottom of a building to move in different directions. And it's this side to side motion that we often call shear, and shear can be very damaging and very destructive. So to minimize the damaging shear, shock absorbers, taper geometry, and cross bracing are three useful techniques that engineers use. Shock absorbers are installed to absorb the tremors and lessen the shaking effect of the earthquake. Taper geometry refers to the gradual narrowing of a building as it increases in height. The narrowing helps to limit the back and forth sway that occurs during an earthquake. Finally, earthquake proof buildings will typically include cross bracing that form triangles within its design geometry. Look at how this building uses triangles to build cross bracing to reinforce and strengthen its structure. All triangles have one thing in common. They form a stable shape. They are the building blocks of many structures because their shape gives them an unusual ability to bear large forces without bending or warping. To illustrate this point, I would recommend having your students make a square out of a straw like the one pictured above. When they do, they'll see that it takes just a little push on the side to find out that it doesn't tend to stay square. Then have them do the same thing with the triangle. They will discover that you can push and pull on it, and yet it has a propensity to keep its shape. Finally, have your students add a cross brace to the square, effectively turning it into two triangles. They'll be amazed at how much of a difference this little addition makes. You see, a triangle is inherently rigid and tough. That's why when you look around, you'll see triangles all over the place. You can find them in bridges, in construction cranes, in houses, and of course, in earthquake-proof buildings where super stable structures can save lives and lessen the impact of this type of natural disaster. Okay, so then for the STEM challenge, students have to design a simple model of an earthquake resistant skyscraper. And in doing so, they have to submit a simple blueprint that includes at least two different design strategies that we talked about and discussed. After the towers are constructed, we test each of the towers using a shake table. And the shake table isn't perfect, but it works pretty good. And we test them first for 10 seconds at a moderate category strength for an earthquake. And then if they survive that, we test it for 10 more seconds at a major category earthquake strength. And then finally, we have students discuss what improvements they think they would make moving forward. And then we actually ask them to go ahead and make those improvements and then retest as time permits overall. So we hope you like the STEM challenge. Good luck with your students and we hope it goes well.